Hey everybody, it's the little one. Um, I have a lot of thoughts about the finale, and so I'm just gonna ramble them off incoherently because I'm a mess. It's been hours since I've seen it for the first time, and I'm still a mess over it. I've watched the full episode four times now, and I've watched individual scenes from it, like, so many times over from that. Um, and I just have a lot of emotions and a lot of thoughts, and I hope you'll join me for whatever this ends up being. So, you guys know me, I'm mostly going to be talking about Tyrus because that's the thing I most emotionally connect to. Um, but I do want to talk about some of the other stuff. So for one, Andy on Nasava. Woo, I think most of us predict that and seeing Andy Shack cleared out like that that hit me in a way I didn't really expect. I'm I'm such a sentimental person. And seeing that empty just <laughs> that just broke my heart. Um Bex and Bowie were adorable. They they got to wear their wedding outfits and dance to the song Bowie used in his video for Andy and like that was so precious. Um, Muffy had like the best kiss of the show, minus Bexy kisses. Um, that moment was so sweet. The callback to episode four. <sighs> that was that was great. That was beautiful. Um, also, Bowie looked great in sunglasses. He only wore them for like two seconds. Um, also, Bexy, Bex and Bowie are such dorks, and I love them so much, and I'm gonna miss them. Um, but yeah, okay. Let's talk about the Tyra scenes now because I'm so happy with how this went. Like, I, I'm 100% satisfied. I I lost it a lot. Um, okay, so when um, Cyrus and Buffy are talking about Marty and he's like, you know, nudges her and she's like, I see you. And then she does the same for him. It's like, ah, the parallels. We love. We love it. Um, and then Kira walked in. I literally, my face just dropped. I'm like what are you doing here, Kira? Why are you here? Like, I knew she had a scene in the episode, but I, like, forgot about it before I started watching this, and I'm like, why are you here, Kira? Why, why do you have to be here? Like, and then we get the line, Buffy's like, I'm sorry, and Cyrus is like, I was probably deluding myself anyway. Like, <laughs> like, I think we knew that was gonna be the context, but still hearing it, like, <laughs> it's like, boy, you're not, you're not at all. Like, oh god, that hurt. But yeah, and then the very next scene when Kira started laughing at Cyrus, I was like about to throw hands at the 13 year old. Cause like, you do not mess with my boy, okay? Cyrus is a national treasure. You will treat him as such. He is precious. He is wholesome. You will, you will not speak ill about my boy, Kira. Like, no. And then TJ like went in there defending his man. It's like, you can't do that. Like, mm. And then she's <laughs> Why don't you tell me what this is really about? God, I hate Kira so much. <laughs> if I asked you to pick between me and Cyrus, you'd pick Cyrus. It's like, yeah, he would, actually. It's like, Cyrus never made me pick. Like, ah. Mm, it's so sweet. It's so pure. It's so amazing. Ah. And then, okay. So, when TJ was on the piano, this isn't technically an entire scene, but I don't care because this was one of the best scenes of the episode. TJ was on the piano, I was like, oh, okay, we're doing this. And I, before the scene, I genuinely thought they were going to sing the theme song. Like, I, that was just what I assumed the scene was going to be. He started playing it, and I didn't recognize it. And then as soon as Cyrus started singing, like, I paused it and just sat there like, they're singing Born This Way. Like, they're singing Born This Way. Like, that Born This Way. Like, are you serious? <laughs> Like, I just sat through the whole scene listening to them singing. I'm like, born this way. They're singing, born this way. <sighs> it was such a great moment. It, it caught me so off guard. Terry, we stand. We stand. Okay. <sighs> okay, so then the big scene, the bench scene. I was so happy with how this went through. It was so pure and precious and perfect and sweet and vulnerable and just it was so them and it was so perfect like okay we gotta talk about this first though Thelonious Jagger really Luke you picked Thelonious Jagger for those of you who don't know Luke Mullen actor who plays TJ got to name TJ like that was his birthday present from Terry Minsky he admitted this in an interview with you're so beautiful now I'm pretty sure um but yeah he got to name TJ and he picked Thelonious Jagger. 
And, like, okay, a part of me thinks this makes so much sense for a storyline, because think about it. His entire character arc has been about, you know, he started off, he had all these walls up, he wouldn't let anybody see the true him up to and including masking his name. He started getting close to Cyrus, and one by one those walls started to come down. He started to be himself. He started to, you know, show who he really was to try and fix that image that he had spent so long building up because he was scared of people seeing the real him. So it comes full circle, and he finally is basically this moment is him telling Cyrus I trust you enough to show you my true self my whole self even the parts of me that I can't always accept and Cyrus being like I love that name is him taking in TJ and be like just because you don't like certain parts of you doesn't mean I'm not gonna like them I like you for you all of that is included and so when, so then they're just sitting there and they're staring at each other and oh my gosh the eye contact the scene like they probably break eye contact twice this scene when Cyrus looks down at, down at the hands which I'm gonna get in that in a second and then later when they actually you know hold hands um but until then they're just like staring at each other with the biggest hard eyes I've ever seen which is saying something because I've seen the rest of this show um but the moment when when TJ's like is there anything else you want to know? And he starts, like, slowly inching his hand towards Cyrus. That part makes me weak. It is the best single moment of the entire episode. Like, <sighs> like, it's so, you can tell he's, like, he's reading the moment and he thinks he has a chance, so he's going for it, but he's still nervous and vulnerable and is, like, giving himself an out in case it all goes horribly, 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 horribly wrong. But, like, He's just shared this, mo this, like, one of his biggest secrets, and he's like, I, I feel comfortable enough to share my other secret. Hopefully this goes well. And then Cyrus notices, and is like, is there anything you want to tell me? Which is basically Cyrus saying, does this mean what I think it means? So TJ saying, yeah, is him saying, yes, I like you. And so TJ's like, is there anything you want to tell me? Is him asking, do you feel the same way? And Cyrus saying yes is saying the same thing. It's like, yes, I like you. And then their smiles are so precious and whole and they're so in love with each other. And then they hold hands and then they just breathe. And like when TJ's first like inching his hand towards Cyrus, you can see him holding his breath. Like he's so terrified of this, but he's still going for it. And it's important that TJ is making the first move because Cyrus wouldn't. Like we had the line, you know, I was probably deluding myself anyway, which proves that even if Cyrus reads the situation correctly, he's not gonna think he read it correctly. And so he kind of does have his guard up for that. He's not gonna make the first move because he really doesn't think TJ has any chance of liking him, even though, you know, there's that part of him that still does. And he's sort of like wrestling with that. It's like, it's like he thinks he does it's like oh it's just wishful thinking i was probably deleting myself it's like but maybe but no but maybe but no and then tj starts making his move and starts just like uh yeah um and he's like okay maybe i wasn't deluding myself and then they hold hands and it's sweet and it's precious and it had the most romantic tension of any scene in this entire episode and i loved it and just <sighs> it was everything i wanted from a tyrus scene and I'm so happy. I really wish we had a season four to see them together, but I think I'm gonna be okay. Um, here's here's where we get sappy with this. Um, the last show that I got super invested in before Andy Mac was Backstage, and I was not nearly as invested in it as I was Andy Mac. Um, that show was something you know I would watch it as soon as it came on the app all the time, but I didn't make videos yet, or at least not about. I have some old videos, but that, we don't talk about those. But um, then they took it off the app, and I just never watched the second half of season one. I did watch season two, though. Um, but in that show, like, that was the best thing Disney had anything to do with, and it was barely a Disney show at the time. And then, did, and then Disney made Andy Mack, and they just, like, outdid themselves. I have not felt this connection to a show since backstage. Even then, my, the connection I feel to Andy Mack is so much stronger than it, it ever was with backstage. And... I really want Disney to be able to capture that magic again because I think they can do it like <sighs> there's so much here that they could work with for another show and there's so much stuff like I want Andy Mac but better but not Andy Mac I want the magic of Andy Mac in some other context but like I don't know if I'm explaining this right I just I want another show I feel this kind of connection to I want another show with a ship that I ship as hard as I ship Tyrus. I want 
another Bex and Bowie. I want another, you know, I just, I want another anxiety storyline. I want another dyscalculia storyline. I want another jock and, you know, cinnamon bun fall in love story because I love those. I want another bad character get a redemption arc with or without a ship. I want, I just, I want Andy Mack but more and I think Disney can do it and I think if they're smart they'll see that Disney was that Andy Mack was so well received that is in their benefit to try it again but more because now they you know it, Andy Mack is the baby steps now we're getting to the point where they can actually walk maybe even run and I just I'm excited to see what they do but there may also never be another show that I feel the same way I feel about Andy Mac. Heck, there might be a show that I love maybe more than Andy Mac, but I don't know if I'll ever feel the same connection that I did to Andy Mac. It was such a special show, and this community is amazing. Like, like I never thought so many people would care about the stuff that I have to say and the stuff that I make, and the fact that I have a thousand subscribers right now, like, that's insane to me. And all the comments people leave, all the messages I get, sometimes I'll be in, like, Emma stream or Ashley stream and someone will recognize me and just, you know, kind of being known in the community. Not in the sense of, like, oh, mm, but, like, the sense that I matter and that my words matter and that my opinions matter. That's a big thing that this show gave me that I never expected and it gave me a community that I never want to let go of and that I'm never going to let go of so as long as you're willing to stick with me I'm gonna stick with you guys um because honestly I love you guys so much you mean the world to me and I wouldn't be where I am without you guys um I am really gonna miss you know watching Smurf's reactions, watching Emma's reactions, watching Ashley's reaction, watching Lou's reactions, watching uh, Shine On Media's recaps, like, I'm gonna miss that for Andy Mac. I'm still gonna be watching all of those channels for other things, but it might not be quite the same as with Andy Mac, if you know what I mean. It'll still be great, and I'm still gonna love it, but, you know, you know what I mean. There was something special about this specific community. I don't know if I'm making any sense. I might just be making everything worse. I just, I am such a mess right now, and I just, I'm happy and I'm sad. It hasn't really kicked in yet that the show is over, I don't think, um, but eventually once, you know, all the hype wears down, I'm probably gonna just, like, break down crying because the show is not gonna be here anymore. I mean, it's still, you know what I mean, um, but yeah, Disney. Give me another show I can spend four years obsessing over. Give me another show with the community I love. Give me another show that inspires me to talk about stuff and to create and to, you know, get involved in a fandom again. Give me something else I can connect to. But yeah, I'm, I'm always gonna miss these characters. I'm gonna miss Andy and Cyrus and Buffy and Jonah and Bowie, and Bex, and TJ, and Marty, and Amber, and all of them. Like, I'm gonna miss them so much. And I'm definitely gonna go back and rewatch the show from time to time when I feel really sad. I'm still gonna be reading fanfiction and probably rewatching reactions and stuff like that and reminiscing on all the theories and all the times we were so painfully wrong and all the times we were extremely right and just... This doesn't have to be the end for the Andy Mac community. And I don't want it to be. Um, what am I gonna do now? I don't know. Um, I'm gonna keep making videos about stuff, obviously. I still have um, my sincere video to make, which I'm now- I, I originally knew what I was gonna do, and now I'm like debating between a couple different things. Um, I still have to record my Q&A. Sorry, that hasn't happened yet. Um, I will get around to that sometime, eventually. Um, but yeah, it's, we made it, we're here, and in the Immortal Words of Andy Mac, I'm with you all the way.